Welcome back to Bailey of Guernsey Shipwrecks. Uh, it's not early in the morning, it's actually coming up to half past five at night. But it's starting to get dark. I want to go out and do a uh, night dive on the cement wreck. That comes with extra issues and extra health and safety stuff, so I'll talk you through it on the boat. We've got to get going because they're waiting for me. You tell it's starting to get dark, the anchor lights are on the boat. mentioned before there's other safety factors you need to factor in when uh, diving in the dark what are they Richard well the question I always ask myself is why do people want to go diving in the dark in the first place you have to then question their sanity but uh, no um, things like shipping so we've got the Commodore clippers in that will probably be going out um, just after you've uh, Hopefully, we'll finish diving by the time it goes out. So we have to let BTS know. It's on the shipping, trawlers, um, you know, and then I've got to be able to find you if suddenly a heavy rain cloud comes down. So I've got to pay attention to your bobber. So we'll probably put a strobe on it so that old men can see it. Um, and generally keep a good lookout. But why do people want to go diving in the dark? Yeah, you know, it's a question of sanity. <laughs> we want to go down and see what the sea life's like and see if there's any congas. So there's other stuff that we need to think of safety-wise as well. So we're going to go down in freeze and we're going to stay within each other's uh, sight lines. We've got spare torches in case we have a malfunction with a torch as well. Um, we're going to go down and feed the congas. It's dangerous doing this during the day, so don't go off and do it yourself. Uh, you need to do it at arms. Um, I'm not going to be doing it because of uh, I like my fingers to be honest. To be fair, we're, we're nearly professionals in it now. Nearly oh my god, nearly. <laughs> how can you be how can you be professionals with wild animals like that? Oh well, uh, or wild fish, I should say. Phil, you're feeding them, all right? <laughs> Have you got your little tongues? No, no tongues today. The only tongues I've got are these. Oh, so we don't have any accidents. We'll do our normal safety brief before we go down as well, just so we all know what bottom times are going to be doing, what air we're breathing, all that sort of stuff. When we get back down onto the shipwreck, we'll all make a note of where our, where the shots landed. So if it's on the bow or the stern or midship, uh, and we'll be putting our strobes on like we do with all wrecks, just so we can uh, find our way back to the line, because one thing you want to be doing in the dark is going back up that shot line. You don't want to be drifting off. There's Matt's strobe. No, that's my strobe. <laughs> oh, well, at least it works. Oh, yeah. Now the other half live. You can barely see. Going to BTS, uh, still be okay. Still okay, yeah, uh, BTS. Uh, good evening. Uh, we're intending, I'm uh, intending putting three divers down on the cement wreck. I see the clipper is uh, in and probably going to be out in the next half hour. Um, is it okay to put my divers in? And I'll uh, speak to the clipper when he clears the clearance. Should we go, Richard? Uh, we're just receiving the effects in order. If you may say this is watching channel 12. Fine, we'll do. Let's think about it. Oh, 
Sorry, we've got dark now. See it up. Yeah, only just. I don't know if you can see that. It's that dark. There's a strobe on the line there. That's our shot line we're going to be going down. So let's get ready. There's no tide. As soon as I hit the bottom of the shot line, I could already see Phil and Matt's already busy tying it into a bollard. So we're either on the bow or on the stern. Before we leave the shot line, we need to hang our strobes off the line. This gives us a flashing light and a beacon we can see from far away. Then a little bit of orientation. As I look over into the hold, I already know we're actually on the bow and is the head. I take a quick glance back at the strobes on the shot line. I can see this from miles away. Mission's on to look for congas now so we can feed them. This hold is full of pelting or some people call them bib. Just as Phil's torch glances across, I catch out the corner of my eye. What is a conga? She's underneath the barrel of a gun. As I turn my own torch on, I notice I've met this conga before. She's called Scarface and she's not very nice. Whoa, that was one lucky pelt. She almost had her. First, she's very cautious of Phil's food. Today's snack for them is scallop frills. I keep looking round because I'm feeling stuff swimming past me. I know to the left under here there's a conger as well. This one's a lot larger. This is probably 30 to 35 pound range. I wonder if this one's hungry. Missed it that time. I'm getting closer, have another little look.
again, I'm feeling stuff around me. So I'll take another quick look around. It feels alongside me, so it can't be him touching me. Take a look at the muscles in the top of the head. These muscles is what helps it give the jaw such strength. Check out the technique of eating the food, it just sucks it in. These are European congas and have an average adult length of 1.5 meters. These things can actually grow to about 7 foot long and possibly even 3 meters or 9.8 feet for the largest of the specimens and a maximum of about 159 pounds. This one might be full now, let's move on to the next ones, see if we can find a smaller one. They seem to be a little bit more feisty. Okay, maybe that's just out the shell as well. Here's another one in an upside down gun. This one looks about the same size as the last one, maybe slightly smaller. The females are always larger than the males, but we believe these are all females and they've come into the shallows to possibly spawn. Congas can actually be aggressive towards humans and the larger specimens can pose a real danger for divers. But these ones are quite relaxed, they're quite happy with us being there, getting a free feed. Phil's found a decent sized shanker or brown edible crab to feed. He seems happy now he's got something. Out of all the congas I've seen in the shipwreck, they seem to be all in the same place, more or less, and this one always seems to be in this hole. Female conger eels produce millions of eggs, uh, and both the male and the female die after spawning. So you tend to get congers between the ages of 5 and 15 years old. Never really that much older. these congas we see here are waiting until they reach uh, maturity uh, when they're going to migrate and repeat the cycle. So they migrate, they spawn, the young ones come into the shallows to live, wait until they're of sexual maturity and then go back into the deep to spawn again. 
they think it's around the Mediterranean somewhere. As I'm pretty much swimming in a soup of scallop frills, I'll decide it's probably best if I get out of here. What I want to look for is some squid, so I leave the side of the shipwreck and go down onto the sand. We're now off the side of the shipwreck and heading towards the bell. I have a quick check on my computer, which says I have three minutes left until I go into deco. Quick glance down at my air to see how much I've got. 150 bar, that's more than half a tank. This lobster is looking worse for wear. He's got four legs on the right hand side, but no legs on the left hand side. Looks like he's been in the wars. As we glide down the port side, you can see all the bags of cement. These were destined for fortifications on Guernsey during the World War II. This is how the shipwreck got its nickname. When it was found, they seen it as full of cement. We're back to our shot line now. This is our anchor, which goes up to the bollard, which is tied off. It fills on top of the shipwreck, and then we'll follow a mat down to the bell. Here you can see the crease in the bell. As it sunk, it hit the seabed and crumpled. Plenty of jeweling enemies of all different colors and sizes. Orange, pinks, yellows, even a shanker holding on. be getting very close to my no decompression limit now. <laughs> yeah, I've hit it. I'm going into deco. I don't want to be hanging on the line for too long, so I'm going to head up now. Just need to look for Matt, do the circular motion with my torch, just so he knows. I'm going up. I collect my strobe on the way past, so Matt now knows I've left the shipwreck. It's only his left now. turn my strobe off now just so I can film Matt as he goes right to the extreme of the bell and turns around
They say don't head towards the light, but in this case, I'm going to have to. As I get up to five meters, Phil's already here doing his safety stop. That's three minutes. Just out the corner of my eyes, I can see weird things, like Matt LeMay. <laughs> Starting to feel very lonely down here now. I'm in the pitch black on my own with Phil already on the boat and Matt swimming towards it. Stored below deck. Shankers. We'll see you uh, sometime. Uh... Yeah, thanks for that, Richard. Yeah, we'll see you, Richard. Happy days. Okay, uh, we'll see you Saturday, possibly. Yes. Yeah.